than Jude Law? I don't, I don't know him. I, you know, he's another one who I couldn't have in my car now. <laughs> um, <laughs> Would uh, um, have you been recognised? You get recognised in the street by people for the first time the other night. It's my birthday tomorrow, and Ricky um, took me out for something to eat um, at the Ivy. It's all right. Fish, chips, peas. Yeah. Um, it was good, you like that? Chocolate pudding. So that's normal food to you though, isn't it? Fish yeah, it's, it's nice, nice really it's nice. It's lovely, it's lovely. Um, but I left there and there was paparazzi outside and they were t- in, taking pictures of Ricky and I always sort of stay out of the way when that's happening because I don't, I don't want to be part of it. But when I left and I got in the cab, I heard someone go, is that the idiot? So in a way, that's the first time <laughs> that's like... I mean, it's not a great moment in my life, it's not a highlight. Yeah. Someone yelling, is that the idiot? And that's all down to Ricky, remember, that the, f- the show's called An Idiot Abroad. Um, that, was, that was like my first touch of celebrity. I didn't like it. The, 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 the yeah, yeah. I mean, an idiot, like, it's not good. It'll change in time. Yeah, but you know that the programme wasn't called An Idiot Abroad initially. No, was it called Carl Goes to the Seven Wonders? Carl Pilkinson, like Seven Wonders of the World. Yeah. And it's all, you see, it's, it's, uh, let's just make sure people know what it's all about. It's a show on Sky One. Um, Ricky and Steve sorted it out. You know, without them, I wouldn't have got the job. And um, it's me going round to see the Seven Wonders of the World. And, uh, and the premise being you're a little Englander, you hate travel. You, yeah? D- yeah. I mean, I think most people listening out there can, uh, you know, I'd say they're the same as me. Not many people like being out of the comfort zone and being in foreign countries and having to eat weird food and get involved in weird stuff. I mean, where did you last go on holiday? New York. Right, there you go then. It's like London. I don't know why you bother. <laughs> Do you know what I mean, though? It's not that different because people don't like different situations. Well, it's got, I suppose it's not that different in that people speak English and, and there are some some of the shops are the same and quite a lot same. of the food is the same. Yeah, you know, um, it's so, not adventurous going to New York, not at all. Whereas yeah. you've been to Peru, Peru, to Egypt, Brazil, India, China. I mean, which one did you really hate the most out of all of those? See, it's weird because. When I was there, I couldn't stand a lot of it. Now I'm back, I look back on India thinking, I can't believe I've been to India. Well, that's what travel does to you. Um, it? Is it? Kind of. I find if any mo- on holiday, any given moment if I stop and think about it, I don't feel like load happy when I'm at home. But when I come back, I remember it all with great affection. Yeah, well, that's kind of what this is like. I, I, India was like that and being in the, um, in, in the jungle in Peru, like being in the Amazon, thinking, what am I doing here? in a one-man tent, sweating, with creatures crawling over me, thinking, this this was never meant to be. Yeah. And it's amazing. At the time, I mean, I was calling up all the time, calling up London, saying, I can't do this. Well, did you try to get out of the show whilst you were there? Yeah. Did you? Three times. Well, you rang and said, I don't want to pull out the whole series. I said, I called up and said, I don't want to do it. Second time I called up, I said, can someone somehow get a contract to me because I want to see if I can get out of this. <laughs> and the third time, I <laughs> How said... How are they going to get you a contract to a tent in the jungle in well, Peru? Well, yeah, I couldn't do it there, but I think I was in... I think I was in Brazil when I sent that. And then in India... Um, I said, right, just tell Sky I'll give them the money back that I've had so far. I don't want to do any more. And they said, we've only done, like, three wonders. It's meant to be the seven wonders. You can't pull out now. I said, no, but if they have the money back, and they said, no, it's not just your money, it's everyone else's. Cameraman, you know. The flights. Everybody, they've yeah, everything. Set it up. And so they've done loads by then. I, I, so, people so you genuinely, it. You're, not, not saying, you're not saying it's for effect, you actually, so you've got an agent, right? Yeah. So did you call your agent from Peru There's and no say... There's no point calling him. Who, so who did you call? I called, called Richard, the, 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 the main man in charge at the production company. I didn't Just, call Ricky because I knew Ricky would be going, this is brilliant, he's having a breakdown. So there's no <laughs> point calling him. He's not a good friend to call in that situation. Um, I called my girlfriend... Suzanne. Yeah, I said, I can't stand this. You're going, you're really lucky. I said, well, you stop saying I'm lucky about travelling the world because you're not where I am. You're not staying in the, you know, the holes that I'm in. So stop saying I'm lucky, right? So I didn't talk to her that much when I was away because I was always annoyed and I thought, I'm just going to upset her. Um, agent, forget it, because they want their commission. They don't want you to pull out. They're not on my side. No. So all I could do is call the bloke at the production office. And what did he say? He said, you can't, it's cost too much money already, you can't get out He just said, look, it'll be okay, just take one day at a time, stop getting worked up and all that. Which, you know, is easy for him to say, whilst he's sat in some office somewhere having a frappuccino. (laughs) Do you know what I mean? All these media people who are going, oh, you'll be fine. 
But he's stress on a. You see, this is the main thing that people have to remember. It's not a joke. It's not scripted. It is me sent away by Ricky and Steve. I honestly went thinking I could be like the new Palin. Honestly, I thought just younger and a bit more sort of honest. All right? I'm not saying he's not honest, but what he likes, I probably don't. But I suppose the difference is with Palin, well, one, there's a lot of differences, but with Palin, he has a level of knowledge that he takes with him to places. Yeah, but that so he's a reporter in a way. in the way, that knowledge. So this, the whole premise is you go there with no knowledge. Yeah. No knowledge apart from the name, the Great Wall of China. You didn't know anything about it. No. Because that's what I'm saying to you. You were just talking about Stonehenge. If an alien landed and you said to him, right, welcome to Earth, let me take you on a tour, and you took him to go and show, see Stonehenge, you go, what, what's this? <laughs> We've come miles, what, what's this? <laughs> show so, me an iPhone! Show yeah. me something exciting! So, so I treated it like I was an alien, just going along, no expectations, no books, making it all seem good, just having a look with my own eyes, learning bits... And the wonders were never anything good. There was bits of facts that I learned. I thought, that's amazing. Like, um, the pyramids had shifted something like five miles since they were built. Oh, that is interesting. It's pretty good, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, things like that are good. Um, you know, learning certain words, meeting people. I mean, it's great meeting different sorts of people around the world. But fundamentally, you didn't like it, and you, would, you wouldn't do another series. No, I said the- no already. Have you? Yeah, I can't. Because the, the clever thing about changing the name from Carl Pilkington does the Seven Wonders to an Idiot Abroad is then you've got, like, a brand where yeah, they could br- just send you anywhere, can't they now? you be proud with that as a brand? <laughs> idiot Abroad? <laughs> this is a joke, though, isn't it? It's meant affectionately. Carl, I mean, right. Ricky calls you the idiot and yeah, but worse on mate. your podcast. That's, that's not new mate. to you. That's a mate, though, isn't it, saying it? And then suddenly it's on a poster. I didn't know those posters. See, that's the other thing. It's a lot bigger than I thought it would be. There's so much stuff on the telly that comes and goes. Yes. And you kind of go, I don't want to be recognised and stuff, but no-one's going to see this. Yeah. It's on Sky. Hide it away. It's on late at night. I won't be recognised. And suddenly it's like a big deal because of Ricky and Steve being in There's it. There's posters everywhere posters. for this show. I didn't show. know about them posters. That, that picture that I had taken for that poster, I was told was for the front cover of Sky magazine. Which no-one reads. Well... Maybe not, but mm. now it's on a poster. Now it's on posters, everyone sees Down the road from where I am. So it's all, everything's been a wind-up, really. Yeah, see, everyone, yeah, everyone, people often say, are, are you an oh. act, don't they? But, yeah, I mean, I've, I've worked with you at, you're at XFM. I've, I've for, I mean, it's not an act, but people think it is. People think that what you're... I think there are some people who think what you're doing now will be, oh, we're selling this show, we probably enjoyed it. People think you're almost in character, is what I'm saying. I know, but... Well, whatever. I mean, if they want to do that, that's fine, but I don't think... Who's a character? Frank right. Sidebottom. You couldn't send him to India and he could keep up all the, you know, mm. the, the upbeat thing that he does because it breaks you down. Yeah. And when you're at your lowest point, you can't, you can't be messing about. Let, let, let's I mean, I'm, I, in India, there's points when I'm really, like, having a breakdown because it got to me that much. Let's take some travel and we'll come back and talk some more. All right. Carl's, <laughs> Carl's here and you can see him as well. On uh, our webcams. It's got four little cameras here. Look, Carl, looking at you. bbc.co.uk forward slash five live. And there's loads of questions coming in as well. I'll read some out in a moment. Louise Perry, it's 20 past two. What's happening out there? Thanks, Richard. The M42. We still have one lane closed southbound 10 and 9. That's Tamworth and the M6 toll following an accident. The A515 remains closed in both directions between Sudbury and the A50. Uh, sorry, between the A50 and Derby Lane in Sudbury. This is following an accident and expected to remain closed until at least 3 o'clock this afternoon. A couple of things in London. The A5, Kilburn High Road, is closed both ways at Belsize Road. That's following an accident. We've also got the A30, London Road. That's closed northbound from the A315, which is the Clockhouse roundabout. That's also following an accident and no change for the A30 that's